Looking to buy a 3D printer kit? You might want to watch this video first. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and the topic of this video is kits and why you might just be throwing the dice when it comes to getting a 3D printed kit that actually works. In today's consumerist society, we've become quite used to the idea that even with low cost products, they'll work at least for a little while. And if they do break instantly, we can just take them back where we got them and get our money back, right? Consumer law is designed to do exactly that, protect you, the consumer from faulty misleading to downright fake products that never function as intended. It's not perfect, I'll be honest, but it's a pretty good safety net. The same goes for 3D printers, which are so-called ready to run or machines that work out of the box. A supplier must honor warranty claims and provide support to you, the consumer, if something breaks, doesn't work or doesn't deliver. I actually recall a case here in Australia where a purchaser of a certain 3D printer was promised a 140 millimeter build height by the spec sheet, but the raft on the machine meant he could only produce parts around 135 millimeters high. This point alone was enough to get a refund. The machine didn't conform to what was promised on the spec sheet, violating consumer law. Even purchases of complete machines from overseas have a level of protection, though do be wary of companies which want you to send the machine back to base for repairs. You'll be footing the bill in most cases. If you really want the best level of support, buy locally from reputable resellers. But this is clearly not the most economical option you're crying Angus. I don't have much money and I want to get the best bang for buck printer I can. I want a kit. What about the TiVo Black Widow or the Anet A8 or the Tronxy A3 and so on? Okay, let's tackle this issue once and for all. And if you're sensitive to criticism, you might want to change to another video. 3D printer kits have several issues which can destroy a newbie's adventure into 3D printing instantly. Let's start with the first hurdle. It's a kit. You must assemble it, and if you're the kind of person who winces at the concept of putting together IKEA furniture, you might not like the idea of assembling a several hundred piece kit down to the wires. Great quality instructions are also critical here. I've seen it all, from incredibly detailed manuals to a single low quality drawing saying wiring instructions. Wow. Useful. So the success of a 3D printer kit is for the most part dependent on your ability to put the machine together in the first place without breaking it or making mistakes. However, kits have another more insidious issue. You see, by being sold as a kit and not a product, these 3D printers circumvent laws put in place to protect you and your safety. Mains wiring, for example, is high voltage and can kill you. And legally, in most countries, you're not allowed to touch anything with mains wiring. However, many of these machines come with mains wiring power supplies that you need to wire in yourself to get them running. And there's no chance they would even pass regulation. However, because you do it yourself, it slips through. Now I'm not saying all 3D printer kits come shipped with mains power plugs without earth and bare wires, but yeah, some do. Were you considering getting a kit for your kids? Well, you might wanna watch out for that. Also, firmware is usually devoid of any thermal runaway or other safety features you might find or want on a ready to run 3D printer, so also watch out for that. Finally though, there's one key factor that can turn a kit printer assembly experience from awesome to a total disaster, and that is QC or quality control. Let's run through a hypothetical here. 3D printer company, a team of 10 based out of Shenzhen, China, make a low cost kit that someone in the community says is awesome. And it is, the kit that that person bought has a good extruder, a great control board, and accurately 3D printed and laser cut frame components. They love it and think it's a great deal, and they rightly so want to recommend it to their friends. Suddenly, seeded by that positive review, the company is hit with hundreds of orders, and in a week this turns to thousands of orders, as people flock to the new awesome low cost 3D printed kit that they saw that random guy have in the community. Oh hey, now it has a coupon code too. Woo! This company now has to suddenly produce many more machines than previously, but that's okay. More orders means they break multiple price discounts and get better prices, right? Well, because it's a kit, they don't have to hand assemble and test every printer that goes out. They just need to make sure they have the parts. 
Their supplier for rollers gladly accepts the new huge order, but they don't have enough originals in stock. So, no, yeah, whatever, they just substitute it for a different, slightly cheaper brand. The 3D printing that they do in-house is also hit hard while I have to try to keep up with demand. So parts which normally would have been deemed inferior now get put into kits anyway, because how else can they get them out the door? The control board supplier also now has to make many more control boards. So they substitute a few components here and there to keep up with demand and keep the prices down. So let's just stick a different type of MOSFET here and that'll still work, right? Let's use some cheaper connectors. And do we need a fuse? No, nah, let's just solder some wire across that gap. Everything I've just mentioned in that list and more has happened and will continue to happen when demand for a product exceeds the company's ability or willingness to engage in proper QC, such as these rollers taken from a TiVo tarantula kit. Visually, they're almost identical. However, one is designed properly with a spacer washer between the ball bearings so it can be tightened down properly. The other has that washer omitted, meaning when you put any sort of force on it, it no longer turns, making it completely useless. And if I bought that kit, then I would have been pretty disappointed. Companies might not even substitute components intentionally. There's been many recorded cases of counterfeit components over the years, such as these fake iPhone accessories with dangerously inferior internal circuitry seized just last week in London. So what does that mean to you, keen 3D printing enthusiast? Well, know what you might be getting yourself into. For a tinkerer or hobbyist like yours truly, a low cost 3D printed kit is a box of fun. Basically, I don't even go into it expecting the thing to function straight out of the box. So my expectations are already set super low. And if a hole is missing or not tapped, that's okay, I have drills and taps. If the extruder sucks, I have spares. And that same thing goes for pretty much everything these days. I can pretty much substitute as I want and I can even 3D print replacement parts if needed. However, if you can't, and if you're a newcomer and that's the first printer you have, then you're pretty much stuck. You're quite literally rolling the dice if you go for the cheapest of 3D printer kits. And some people are okay with that, but don't kid yourself. You're making the conscious choice to buy for price and you waive all rights to support or warranty. Don't expect Gearbest or Banggood to honor much in that regard. My advice, if you wanna get into 3D printing to 3D print stuff, buy a ready to run machine to start with. Chinese 3D printers which are ready to run or almost ready to run are actually pretty good these days. Like the CR10 for example, only needs a few bolts to assemble as well as the Wanhaus, they're quite good. And they seem to have maintained QC half decently as the popularity has increased. They're not immune to problems, but they're far more likely to get something that actually prints out of the box than some of these kits. If you're interested in what I think are great value first printers, you can check out this link to machines I've personally tested and recommend under $300 USD. And if you're new to 3D printing, you might wanna check out our new ebook on 50 3D printing tips and tricks designed to help you avoid making the mistakes I made when I was getting into 3D printing and get you up and running and printing things as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video guys on Makers Muse, I'd love to have you subscribe. It helps out a huge amount. I love empowering your creativity through 3D printing. And I hope you found this video useful. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Happy printing guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into water.